Okay, so this is a bonus and uh, it's not gonna be the way it has been. This is not kind of an interview. I met Darren um, a few years ago through National Speakers Association. And um, he has been a TV personality, a speaker, an author, and I love what he's written as a passionator. Uh, you wrote the book was, and I've got it. In fact, I love when I meet speakers and that because then they sign everything for me. But you wrote a book. Uh, was it lights, camera, passion? Did ding ding ding! Right? You got it. Yeah. <laughs> And but you have been in every aspect of TV and um, programs and so forth. But then you switch gears and you started working for um, this company that you're at. And so what? So first of all, tell us a little bit about your background and then where you got to where you are now. Yeah. So I was in, in TV for 25 years and coached a lot of people on coming on TV everybody has a message when they come on TV and I was the host or the interviewer. And so I would talk to them about how to get their message across. Sometimes these were small business owners trying to promote a business. And so we talked about, okay, here are the best ways to market. Here's the best ways to do this and that. So I was used to coaching small business owners and entrepreneurs about how to get their messaging out. So I left then TV and was, was going to be an entrepreneur myself, going to be a small business owner, going to be a speaker, going to go around and coach people and train people. And uh, then I saw someone speaking from stage for a company called Infusionsoft. And, and I so loved the company and the mission and what they were all about. I thought, this is really what I want to do. I want to empower people to be more successful, sort of the same way I've been doing through TV, but now through software and tools and technology and all that kind of stuff. So I approached them and they said, hey, seems like a good fit. So that's how it all happened. Yeah. So Darren is um, going to share with us Infusionsoft. And one thing I love about is that, you know, we get these clients and it's like, now what do we do with them, right? Or you get somebody signed up or you start creating a mail list or you, you know, and it's like, what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> you know, how do I, how do I stay engaged? How do I um, connect instead of writing out one email at a time? And that, so um, tell us kind of a little bit of how we're gonna go about this. And thank you so much for uh, coming on and doing this for us. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll, I'll let everybody know, normally I work from my home office. This week I am visiting my aging parents and uh, I'm doing a little care visit with them. So if in the background you hear the Matlock TV really loud or you hear someone calling for medication or a glass of water, you'll understand why. I'm in, I'm in my childhood home here in the living room. So um, that's all good. So I wanna show people through, I'm gonna, I've, I've identified from talking to thousands of entrepreneurs around the world, 10 ways, 10 struggles that everybody has and then 10 ways to overcome these. And all of a sudden, when you heard Lisa say Infusionsoft, you're like, oh, I've heard of Infusionsoft. It's really hard. It's like, it's a, but first of all, I'm not talking about Infusionsoft. I'm, I'm talking about something different. I'll explain some of that. Yeah. But I'm going to walk you through how to be more successful, how to follow up with the people, how to get systems in place, do all that kind of stuff. So Lisa, should I just jump in and start out? Absolutely. Yes, please. Okay. Let me, oh, can you uh, enable me to share my screen? And I'll pull up some slides and walk people okay. through. Okay, see if that works. Does that work? Okay, it looks like it does indeed. Let me pull up that and click on that. Click on that. There. Yep. You see everything? Great. Um, so what I, what I really want to show you in the next little while is basically how to get organized, which will help you get customers, which will help you get paid. It's, it's basically as simple as that. The more organized we are, the better tools we have, the better systems we have in place. Exactly like Lisa said, when you get a new client, then what do you do and how do you handle that person? How do you handle the follow-up? How do you do that? And because we often don't have systems because we don't really know what we're doing, we don't convert them into customers. And if we don't convert them into customers, we don't get paid for them. Let me go back in time a little bit. Lisa mentioned Infusionsoft. About 20 years ago, this guy right here, Clay, decided he wanted to start a company to help small business owners and entrepreneurs. And so he started a company. It, it didn't even exist. The whole technology, marketing, automation, follow-up, email marketing did not exist for small business people back then. So he started a company, partnered up with his childhood friend, Scott Martineau, and together they formed Infusionsoft. And they coined the whole idea of what they call life cycle marketing. That you don't just market once and say, 
hey, uh, I'm, a, I'm a website designer. I can design a website for you. And if no one picks you up on it, then it's over. No, but it's more of a, it's an ongoing process. It's a living, breathing kind of a thing. Well, about two years ago, they said, you know, we have better technology now than we did 20 years ago. So why don't we put the best stuff that we can together in one place? And so they did, forget about Infusionsoft, they created a platform called Keep. It has the best tools, it is easier to use, it's slicker, it's great, better customer interface. And with Keep, I'm gonna show you some of those tools. With Keep comes a new of doing business, sort of lifecycle marketing 2.0, new ways to collect leads and convert clients and, and create fans. So that's what I'm gonna walk you through today. Sometimes it would take me like a half hour, and it's been a half hour, a half day. I'm gonna boil this down as fast as I can do it, run through it. So take notes if you want to. I can't really see the chat room questions while I'm doing this. So if you have questions, put them in chat. We'll come back and visit them. Lisa will keep track of that. We can, we can try to cover some of the questions that we go through. But basically what I'm going to show you is the thing that PC Magazine calls the best marketing automation. Business News Daily calls the easiest to use CRM. So here we go. Ready? 10 ideas, 10 stumbling blocks, and 10 ways to overcome them so you can be more successful. Number one of our top 10 ways to win more business is every business in the world struggles to get new leads. Every business constantly. That's the biggest struggle. And the, the thousands of people I've talked to all over the world, that's it. Trying to get new leads. It doesn't matter if you're General Mills or General Foods. It doesn't matter if you're Apple or if you're IPM. You're all looking for new leads. If you don't have new leads coming in, you don't have any business coming in. New leads are the lifeblood of your business. So what you've got to remember, lesson number one, is leads have a half-life of three days. When you meet that person, they're a hot lead right then. They're interested in whatever you have to do. Maybe you're, maybe you're a business coach and they say, I need some help getting, getting my business together. And you say, fantastic. Three days from there, they are not as hot as they were. You've got to think of every lead like a tossed salad. The salad is great today. Everybody wants this salad today. Though it looks healthy and great, I want to have that. But three days from now, that salad's not as good. You know it as well as I do. You don't, you're, not, you're not super excited about eating that salad in three days. Every person you meet needs to be like a salad and you need to somehow capture them immediately. So the number one way to win more business is have some kind of automated lead capture. That's something that you can capture the lead with you not having to do the work yourself. It can be automated. There's great technology out there. Let me give you a case point. Uh, Danielle Burnett, friend of mine, she teaches people how to crush it from stage, how to get on stage and how to speak and be more successful. So when she gets on stage, she says, I've got a resource for you. I've got this checklist for you that will help you be more successful when you get on stage. If you would like this, just go to this page. This is just a simple opt-in form. She directs people to the opt-in form. They enter their information in, name, email, boom. Instantly, they get a notification. Th thanks. By the way, you can schedule a call with Danella. Here's the first email that automatically goes out. Download the checklist if you want. By the way, you can schedule a call with Danella. Here's my resource for you. By the way, you can schedule a call. Here's my calendar. She just started this when COVID hit, like nine months ago or whatever. She had more than, just through this opt-in form alone, more than a thousand people opt in and more than a hundred people joined her membership and she earned multiple six figures simply by having an opt-in form. She did not do any work as far as entering any of those contacts in. That was all done automatically without her having to do it. This, this is what the future is. Well, it's what the past was as well. We're going to go back to the time when we do live events and we exchanged business cards. This was literally the top of my desk. I literally had this many business cards. And, and, and I used to feel guilty, but guess what? We all do. You have business cards as well as I do. You've got a stack, you got a box, you got a bag. I, can, I know it, I can see it in your faces that you have cards that you've not followed up with. So imagine you doing this. You literally just pull up your phone, pick up your phone, hold the business card. It's the little middle button there. You can manually enter them from your phone. Highlight them, dump them in. You can manually do it at the bottom. But if you do on the, the middle button, you hold up a business card, position it, take the picture. Then the software reads all the information, name, email, phone number. All the information you need is right there. It'll ask you a question. Is this person a lead? Are they a client? So we can organize it for you. And that's how long it took and the contact record was created. This is me looking at the contact record for Bobby Joe. I just took a picture of her business card and that long, that's how long it took the contact record was created. If I want to pull up a contact record for Jack, then I look up on my laptop. Here's on my laptop. You saw it on the phone. You now have access to be able to get the information. And you know how long it took for you to contact, to create that contact record, to automatically capture that lead was like a second. 
if you're pushing the button or direct them to an opt-in form. Those are all tools you need to do. You can build all those inside of Keep. Makes it easier for you. Okay, here's the number two thing. Your free time should be called burning money time. Now, now you're like, wait, no, I want free time. And I want you to have free time. Free time that's planned to be free time is good. The bad kind of free time, the burning money time, is when you're saying, hey, um, Tuesday, I'm planning on working from 9 to 5. From 9 to 5, I'm going to have income generating activities. I'm going to be generating revenue from 9 to 5. And all of a sudden, you get to your calendar, and from 1 to 3 or whatever, there's nothing there. There's nothing on the calendar. Now, all of a sudden, instead of that being like money-making time for you, there's nothing there. And now it's burning money time for you. That's the bad kind. Lesson number two from this is the faster you schedule something, the sooner something happens. If you want activity to take place, you've got to schedule it. It's got to get on your calendar. And so the number two thing you need is you have some kind of scheduling calendaring tool. Maybe you have Calendly or Time Trade or Schedule Once or some tools like that. They're all fantastic. We integrate with those. So that's great. It's also built into Keep, so you don't actually have to have an outside tool. You can use the one that's built into Keep to make it even easier for you. If, if you're not familiar with that, starts with a blank calendar. And by the way, we sync up with Google or Outlook. So if you had like a Google calendar, those Google events will auto-populate on your calendar. So you don't have to worry about checking a bunch of different calendars. You have one central place for people to check. Now, bottom left corner, this is the cool part. You create a little link. In this case, it's a 30-minute marketing tool. Maybe you have a 10-minute intro call. Maybe you have an hour coaching session. Maybe you have a half-hour VIP experience, whatever it might be. You make a link for whatever you want. You send that link. You just click that button and send it to someone. Now they can see on your calendar when you're free. They know when they're free. They just pick a time. And then they get a notification saying, okay, let's book some time for you. By the way, this is another automatic lead capture form. Remember we talked about the automatic lead capture, the, like the opt-in form. This would be another way to do it. If you don't already have them in your database, this takes care of it. So they fill out the information. Hey, thanks, your schedule confirmed. And now we got to remind them. we got to make sure. So out goes a reminder. Hey, you got an appointment coming up tomorrow. Hey, you got an appointment coming up in an hour. It not only helps save you time because it gets them on your calendar faster, it saves you time because it makes sure that they show, show up at the appointment. The sooner you schedule something, the sooner something's going to happen. So take that calendar, the embed code, take the embed code for it and put it everywhere you can. Put it on your website, put it on the landing page, put it in an email, do a joint venture with someone else, have them send it out. The more places you can put that calendar link, the more people have access to your calendar, the more people book time with you, the more things happen, the more money you make. It all starts with getting that calendar link out anywhere you can. Karen, a friend of mine, she just barely signed up with Keep. I know, six, seven months ago, short period of time ago. She has a publishing company and she helps people get published in traditional and non-traditional ways. So her lead magnet, her free offer is all of her contacts. She calls it her million dollar Rolodex. She drives people to a, an opt-in form where they sign up for that. And she's, okay, thanks. By the way, schedule a free consultation right there. She sends the email out. Here's my Rolodex. And by the way, schedule a free consultation. Guess where that's taking them to? They get the Rolodex. At the bottom of that, it says, hey, schedule a free consultation. Guess, guess where that's taking them to? You know where it's taking them to. To her calendar link so they can book time with her. She just started this six, seven months ago, has doubled her database because now she has some organized way for her to engage with people, send out stuff. The automation happens. Amazing stuff. So fill your calendar and use a calendar tool to do that. Number three, if you're running a sloppy business, you're not profitable. This, this is the problem for some people and for some people more than others. And you're thinking like, oh, I'm pretty organized. I'm pretty whatever. So lesson number three is you've got to become the Marie Kondo of your business. Not just kind of organized. You've got to become a guru. I don't know if you know Marie Kondo. She is a organizational guru. She's got TV shows. She's got books. She shows people how to tidy up and put everything in the right space. My wife loves Marie Kondo. So my wife... We had, we had to refold all the towels in the dish in the kitchen, in the dish towel drawer, just because this is how Marie Kondo says you need to do it. When you open the drawer, you can see the towels better. It doesn't change the towels. It just changes how you get access to them because this is Marie Kondo. My wife has an addiction that we are working on. She is addicted to ribbon. She literally has buckets of ribbon, bags of ribbon, boxes of ribbon. Ribbon was taken over the house. So I said, honey, I'm going to build you a ribbon shelf. So it's like five shelves. 
four feet across. You can put as many ribbons on there as you want. And she's like, this is fantastic. I'm going to take over. One of our sons had just gotten married and moved out. She said, I'm going to take over his room. I'm going to turn it into my rapping room. Not, not like rap music <laughs> or anything like that. She's not like laying down beats up there. She just likes rapping. By the way, we've had the wrapping room for about a year and a half. I think maybe five presents have actually been wrapped in there because she doesn't want to use it as a wrapping room. She wants to use it as her organizational room. When she walks in, this is what she has. There's the bulk roll of wrapping paper. There's some greeting cards. There's the scissors. Everything's in its right spot. She knows she feels organized here. She knows that when she starts the day in an organized place, she's going to be able to get more done. She's not a professional rapper by any means. Nobody comes and says, wrap this for me. But she starts her day out here to feel organized. And while she's sitting in that chair, guess what she's looking at? The ribbon shelf. There it is. So if you're if you're sitting there and you're thinking, oh, I wonder where I can find red and white stripe. You know exactly where the red and stripe, white stripe is. It's on the red ribbon with the stripes. Everything is in its face. This is what your business needs to be. Every contact that you have, every person you meet needs to be the equivalent of a roll of ribbon. They need to be in the right category, need to have all the information there. This is what you need to have. Basically a CRM, a client relationship management tool or a customer relationship management tool. When you have something like this, this is the brain. This is the brain of your business. It's where everything takes place, where all the data is stored in your brain, in your CRM. Maybe you have a, a free CRM through Zoho or something like this. This is a way better tool. I'm going to show you. This is what a CRM should be like. So you can see the different color dots over there on the left. Those are like the different shelves of ribbon. Here are my leads and my clients and my different people that are on there. So if I want to say, oh, show me everybody on my lead shelf, you just click the button and it pulls up all the people on your lead shelf. Maybe you want to manually add somebody because we've talked about how to automatically doing it. If you want to manually add it, you can just push the button. You can manually add the information in there. And the last question it asks you is, is this person a lead or a client or invoiced or whatever that they might be? So that's how you add people. That's the different shelves. This is a contact record for Jack. We mentioned him earlier. Every single person you know, every person you meet needs to have their own contact record in your database so you can track all the information about them. For example, Jack, underneath Jack, you can see the grayed out button for activity. So if I want to see what's the latest activity, have I sent him an email, have I called him, have I made a note on him, that latest activity will show up. The next button over from activity is details. So this is name, email, phone number, address, all that information. It's all at my fingertips. There are a hundred fields, a hundred fields of details that you can enter for each person. Birthday, anniversary, whatever, whatever you need to have for the data is all going to be there. And then the, last, the next button over is email. So now you can see email activity. Uh, do you, have you, maybe I was in my Keep account and I sent an email to Jack. That will show up in there. Maybe there was an automated series, a campaign of three or four emails that went out. That will be in there. Maybe I was in my Gmail account. Because remember, it syncs up with Google. So that will be in there. All of your email will be there. It's more than just tracking email. It's tracking, it's tracking the history. It's basically tracking your relationship with that person. And the more that you can document that relationship, the more you know how you can help that person. And the more you can help that person, the more that helps you and your business. So imagine having everything all in one place. I like to think that's what KEEP stands for. Keep everything all in one place. K-E-A-P. It doesn't stand for that but you can think of it that way. It's gonna help you stay organized with everything in one spot. Okay, here's the next one. I think we're up to number four. There's nothing worse than talking to someone who doesn't know you, but they have all the answers. You know, this is like, this is like Uncle Bob at, the, at your Christmas party. He came over to your house or something like that. Maybe you had a party or something, um, or you're on the phone. And Uncle Bob says, well, you know what your problem is? I got an answer for, for you. And like, Bob, Uncle Bob, you don't know me and you don't know what my, what my problem is the answer is. And you decide to get it, you get annoyed by Uncle Bob. The problem is if you are doing marketing, if you are emailing someone, if you're reaching out to someone and you say, hey, here's a solution for you, you've turned into Uncle Bob. If you're sending that same solution to everyone, you don't know the people. So lesson number four, it's good to know your people, but it's really better to know what they want, what they need, how you can serve them. For example, who are your repeat customers? Those are very different from the people who are just meeting you for the first time. They're, they're, they're all people. They're all people who can use your services, but the words you use, the verbiage you use, the, the marketing you use is going to be different from those people. Who are the people who might know about marketing opportunities? Maybe they can sell your products or services. Who are the people who might know about a speaking opportunity, a, a summit or a webinar, or get in front of people? Those are 
sort of the same messages, but delivered very differently. So you've got to have list segmentation. This is the next way to win more business. List segmentation lets you take advantage of the power of your list. Your list is great. Maybe you have 500 names. Maybe you have a thousand names, however many you got. That's good. But what's good, what's better, what's powerful is knowing who those people are. Have they done business with you in the past? Have they never done business with you? This is the database at the bottom that we just showed you a second ago. At the bottom, it says you need custom fields. We've got you covered. You can have up to 100 custom fields. What, Whatever is important to you. Does it matter to you if the person is male or female? Does that change the way you market to them? If so, make it a custom field. Um, does it matter if they're over 50 or under 50? Does, does that matter how you market things? If so, make it a custom field. Does it matter if they live in Ohio or Oregon or Oklahoma or any other state that starts with an O? Make it a custom field. Make all those things things that you can track because the more you can track those things, the more you can take advantage of them to help you grow your business. Okay, here we go. Second half. You can't make money if you can't ask for the business. Every single one of you is here because you want to make more money. Every single one of you wants to make more money and do more business and be more successful. Part of the challenge is something you don't ask for the business. You don't know how to ask for the business. People don't know what your business is. Lesson number five is a painful one. Invisible businesses get robbed every day. Invisible businesses get robbed every day. Now you're thinking like, what's an invisible business? An invisible business is something that somehow, well, look, okay, we'll, we'll pretend like everybody, everybody has like a Google search in their mind and Google engine kind of thing. And they think of, I need someone to help me. Maybe you're a nutrition wellness coach. I need someone to help me get in better shape, lose some weight, feel better about myself or whatever like that. And so they, who could, who could help me with that? If your name pops up, then that's great. But if you're not number one or number two, you have become invisible. In somebody's brain Google search, when they go through and try to think who can help me, and they're thinking of your area of expertise, your business, if you're not number one or two, you have become invisible and you're getting robbed by the person who is number one or number two in their mind. So the way you overcome this is email marketing, email updates, email newsletters, just staying in touch with people through email. Email is the most powerful cost-effective, productive way for you to stay top of mind with someone, for you to make sure that you are not an invisible business. Email marketing is basically free. It doesn't matter if you send one email or send a million emails. So send a million emails. I, you don't have to send a million, but send more. However many you're sending now, send more. The more you send, the higher up you go in people's top of mind. There was a, there was a company, Inspiring Speakers Association or something that I got on their list. They don't they are not scared of sending emails. They love to send emails. They have great content. They have great information. So people like getting their emails. On October 30th, they sent me four emails on one day alone. I guarantee you nobody here is sending four emails a day. And they sent me like two or three the next day. They send lots of emails. They're not afraid of sending emails. They're afraid of becoming an invisible business. That's what they're afraid of. I mean, I'm not they're really afraid of that. But they will not let that happen. And so they send more emails. Maybe you use... Uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact or something like that to do that. That's all built inside of Keep as well. So you don't have to worry about that. Ryan Dice, he owns a company called Digital Marketer. Great marketer. He knows all about this. He has a, uh, an event called T and C, Traffic and Conversion. And so Ryan understands how to make business. You got to ask for the business. So he sends emails. This is a colleague of mine who said, hey, Ryan just sent me an email. He says, hey, Ramon. It's, it's not, a, not a form email. It's not, I mean, Ryan sends thousands and thousands of emails. But he doesn't say, dear friend. He says, hey, Ramon. And at the bottom page, it says, we've taken this Ramon's event a step further. So he, he uses your name. You're personalizing that. You can do that inside of Keep. We have got like a merge field. So you say, put their first name here. And it just sort of inserts it into the email. But remember, the reason he's doing this is because he wants to ask for the business and make money. So he says, hey, here's a discount. Come to my event. He understands. You send emails out. You ask for the business and you make money. Okay, here's the next one. Your work-life balance shouldn't cheat you out of opportunities. And, and that happens. That happens because as small business owners, as entrepreneurs, we get it. We understand that most, most small businesses don't succeed. It's a struggle for most of them. And so we want to do whatever we can to make sure we succeed. And so we blur that work-life balance. We, 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 take, we take our cell phone with us to go out to dinner. 
because we might be able to get something done. We take our laptop with us to the kids' soccer game or something like that. And so that work-life balance just gets way out of whack. Lesson number six is take your business with you, but have boundaries. There are two important things here. First of all, you've got to be able to have the technology to take your business with you. So you can work anywhere, anytime, any place. But you also got to be able to pause it or snooze it so that you can have those boundaries if you want. I'm going to show you two great tools that you're going to love here. The first one is every one of you needs to have a dedicated business phone line. This is a phone number. It's a phone number that's going to ring on your cell phone, but it is not your cell phone. You don't ever give out your personal number for your business again. Instead, you say, here's my business line. That just makes you seem more professional. It makes you seem more legit. I, I don't care if you're working in a corner of a basement surrounded by boxes. If you, you can tell someone, here's my work number, here's my business number, it makes you seem way more legitimate than all of you can do is say, here's my cell phone. It's going to ring on your cell phone. You're going to have a different voicemail on one on the other. You can snooze one and not the other. You can see that it's coming through. Oh, this is a work number. Oh, this is a, a personal number. Super easy to get them too. By the way, you might have one through Grasshopper or some tool like that. You don't have to. It's built in to keep. So you don't have to worry about that. So you enter your area code. Hey, my area code is 480. Great. Here's a bunch of phone numbers. You just choose one. You pick one and that's going to be your new phone number. It will be your new business number. Put it on your business card. Put it on your website. Put it on the side of your minivan. I don't care where you're putting it. Put that phone number out there. It is your new business line. People will get your business voicemail for that. It will help you be successful and seem legitimate. When somebody, you can even call out on that number. You can text out on that. So this is like a text. You're saying, hey, let's meet. See at the middle of the screen where it says, hey, let's meet. Right underneath that, there are three different icons. There's a camera and a photo and looks like a little desktop calendar. Guess what that calendar is? It's your calendar link that we just made a couple minutes ago. Remember that? All you do is say, hey, let's meet. Push that button. It sends the calendar link to someone. They have access to your calendar. I sent this to Michael. I said, here, let's meet sometime. Next thing I know, I get a notification on my phone saying, hey, Michael just booked some time with you. I can then even get into my contact record, all on my phone still. I get on Michael's contact record and I click, great, Michael's doing some, some you know, booking some time with me. That's how simple that was. I push the button to create his contact record, boom. I push the button to send out a, a calendar link, boom. And now I've, got a, now I've got someone booking time with me. Now I'm going to show you the mobile app. That was just getting a phone number, just the dedicated business line. Now I'm going to show you the power of the mobile app, which does amazing stuff. You log in. There's your CRM, your ribbon shelf. You can see all the different categories right there. I want to jump in. Now my phone, my phone is going to sync up with my Keep CRM so that maybe I have the contact record for Bobby Joe. I took the picture of Bobby Joe's business card. Instantly now my phone connects Bobby Joe's contact record with any past history. So I had texted Bobby Joe and that's all gonna sync up so I can track that through Bobby Joe's contact record. See the ease of this? Maybe I call Bobby Joe, there's no answer. So I leave a voicemail. Now, you know, three days from now, I'm like, wait, what was the latest with Bobby Joe? Did I call Bobby Joe? Am I supposed to, what's, this, what's the status? I put this as a note in here so that when I look up Bobby Joe, the notes, it says, oh, no answer, left voicemail. It's going to remind me, oh, that's right. I called and she wasn't there. I better call Bobby Joe back. All I have to do is get into my tasks, say, call Bobby Joe back. I text that in there. So it's keeping track of what has happened and keeping me on task, literally, for what has to happen next. Okay, maybe somebody calls and the, my phone recognizes, say, hey, this is a new number. Let's add them to your contacts. Yes, I want to add them to my contacts. That's the whole point of this. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to grow my business. Now, the middle of the screen, look down here again. So there's the camera. There's a new one. You notice the new one? The camera, the picture, the calendar. Now it looks like a little business card. It looks like a driver's license. It's a little business card with all your contact information. Remember that. So it says, do you want to add them to your contacts? Yeah, we want to add them. That person's a lead. And we say, okay, let's do that. Then I click on the button that is the business card. It sends the business card. My, so I already have them in my, my phone. Now they've got me in their phone. That's the first blue box right there is my contact information. 
Then I hit the calendar, the desktop calendar button. That's the second blue box there. Here's my calendar link. Then I can send a photo, what, whatever photo I wanna do. If I'm doing graphic design, here's some photos in my camera roll that I can send you. If I'm doing some real estate investment, here's a picture of a home I think that we should partner up on or whatever. You can take photos, you can send photos, all of that from the push of a button inside of your phone. Maybe somebody even calls you. This is one of the best parts. Someone calls you, you're busy. You can't take the call. Maybe you're driving, you're running around doing something crazy. Let it go to voicemail. These are missed calls. So the bottom one, Brad, Brad called. I couldn't get to Brad. So it, Brad leaves a voicemail. It transcribes the voicemail, types it all out and attaches it to his contact record. So all I have to do is go look up Brad's contact record and I can see written out the voicemail. That's way better than trying to remember what he told me. This is stuff you can do from your laptop, stuff you can do from your phone. You can send emails, you can send texts. You can do all sorts of automation. The whole point is you're gonna have the right tools. You can take them with you. You can work anywhere, any, with anyone, anytime, but you can pause it all, you can snooze it all so you can restore some of that work-life balance. Okay, we got a few more to go here, like four more to go. People want to buy, here's the stumbling block, and you don't even know this was a stumbling block. People want to buy, but your website is a distraction. And, and you're saying like, no, my website's great. I've got great stuff on my website. I've got a lot of cool stuff. I've got some videos. I've got some photos of products. I've got people doing testimonials. I've got pictures of me. I've got a list of all the things. Oh, see, you got a lot of stuff. You got so much stuff, it's a distraction. You want people to take action and then you drive them someplace where there's a lot of distraction. That's not going to work. So lesson number seven is that websites are pretty. You got to have a website. I'm a big believer in websites, but landing pages are profitable. A website is like the mall. A website is like there's all sorts of great stuff, displays and people playing the piano and glass elevators, all sorts of stuff. But the landing page is the cash register. The landing page is where people go because they need to actually take action and do something. So get them away from the distraction and get them to the action instead. Landing pages are the key. Landing pages are sort of the new website. You still need a website, but landing pages are where you drive people to take action so they don't get distracted. By the way, a landing page is something that you're going to do on your own. You don't hire a web guy to, to build a landing page for you. You're going to do those inside of the Keep landing page building tool. We got a bunch of templates, just overhauled it. It's easy. You drag and drop. You put some stuff there in the templates, your photo, your icon, your logos, colors, all that stuff. Boom, presto change. 20, 30 minutes, you have a landing page you drive people to. You're going to have that little short code from the landing page. You put it on a website, put it uh, on a landing, no, put it in an email, but do joint venture with someone else. Put it everywhere you can. Put it in a link on your social media bio. Everywhere you can, people can now click on that and come to your landing page. I've, I've already shown you some. This was Karen. This was a landing page that she uses to get her, her lead magnet out. This is what Danella drives people to. You can have an opt-in form on your landing page. Sharon is a friend of mine. She does home equity loans. Guess where she drives you? This is her website, bottom page. She doesn't want to get you distracted on her website, so she wants to get you click here to start, bottom left corner. You click there. You go to a landing page. People like it when you use landing pages. Landing pages make them feel like they, they're doing what you're supposed to do. So they go to, they click the landing page, fill out the form. They said, fantastic, you did it. You did what you were supposed to do. We'll call you. We'll reach out. And then people know, oh, I did it. I, I succeeded. It's not like you just go into a website and browsing around like, oh, that was fun. No, you take action. You actually do something. Ryan Levesque, he's a great marketing guy. He coaches people on different businesses. When you, when you Google Ryan Levesque, 99.9% .9 of us would just have that person come to our website. Ryan understands marketing. So Ryan buys a Google ad because he doesn't want to send you to his website because his website has a bunch of stuff. His website is a distraction. So where do you think that Google ad takes you to? You Google Ryan Levesque, you click on the first thing, it takes you to a landing page. That's the whole point of this. It's a landing page where you sign up to get a book of his. Do you see all the tabs at the top, the navigational tabs to go to other places on his website? No, because he doesn't put them there. He doesn't want you to get distracted. He doesn't want you to wander off and look at videos and then you're on YouTube or some strange place. He wants you to take one action, one thing, 
One call to action on one landing page. That's the rule of thumb. Drive people to landing pages where they can take action. Chris uh, does some real estate investing, lots of stuff on his website. So we want you to click on that green button, which takes you to a landing page. One more guy, Brian and Greg. They have a video course. They show people how to get going with Keep software. So people who start out with Keep software, they buy his course and it, like 30 videos. He says, hey, we got 30 videos that walks them through. It's a great course, by the way. People love their teaching style and how they walk them through. So it's great. So you say, perfect, let's go. Where do you think that's gonna take you to? A landing page. Let's get ready to get started literally a cash register, not just figuratively. There is literally a place where people can buy the video course. Someone signs up, the automation kicks in, check your inbox, email coming. Here's the first email, begin the course. People jump in and start the course. People buy that course day and night and it all starts from a landing page. All starts from the action of the proverbial cash register a landing page. All of you need to be building landing pages so people can take action. Don't be content with a, a website. Build landing pages. Build as many as you can. Customize them if you want to. Drive people from different demographic landing pages, but landing pages are the way to do that. Okay, I got three more to go. Three more obstacles. This is a big one. Taking money shouldn't be hard, either for you or the people who want to pay you. Sometimes we, we make it a little more difficult, and sometimes it's difficult for us. Lesson number eight is the sooner you invoice, the faster you get paid. They've done research. It doesn't matter how much money someone owes. It doesn't matter what the payment terms are. The single biggest factor in you getting paid faster is how soon you invoice. I, I used to hate that. Before I was working for Keep and Infusionsoft, I dreaded when someone said, can you send me an invoice? I didn't have any system. I didn't have any way to build invoices. So inside of Keep, we let you build quotes and invoices, it's super easy and fast. So a couple quick clicks, you create a quote, you personalize it, push a button, it turns it into an email, sends the invoice to someone, you, the quote to someone. You can now actually track this on a sales pipeline. You can see all the different quotes you've sent out. This is a good motivational tool. You can say, look, if all these people pay me, look at the money I could have coming in. Then someone says, okay, I wanna do business, send me an invoice. So you upload your logo with a click of a button, turn it into an email, send it to them, and now you can track your invoices. You can see which ones are paid, which ones are not paid. It's a little pipeline tool for you. And it integrates with QuickBooks Online. If you use QuickBooks Online, you're gonna send me a thank you note every day. We integrate with hundreds of different programs. QuickBooks is the green circle over there on the left, and it's a native integration. So you don't like use Zapier to connect it. It's a built-in integration. So if you were to be in, I'm in Keep right now. I take a payment from Herald. I log that payment. If I log out of Keep and log into QuickBooks Online, that payment shows up there. So super simple and easy and, and it saves you time. You don't have to worry about double manual entry. Okay, I got two more roadblocks. This one is perhaps the biggest stumbling block. This is where you have stand the chance to see the most success because the problem is most of us give up before we get the deal. We don't know how many times we have to ask, would you like to do business with me? 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 You ask several times and pretty soon you get tired of asking and so you give up. And you give up before you get the deal. You don't get the deal and you give it up because you don't know. It used to be seven touches. If you touched, you know, seven times you'd ask somebody and then you could make, make a deal with them. That number is way higher now. It was like at 15 and like 21 and like 40. I don't know how high it is. None of us knows how high it is. And so we ask for a while, want to do business, want to do business. And then we give up before we get the deal. So lesson number nine, number nine out of our top 10 is that repetition makes champions. It's how someone learns to do like some Olympic triple sow cow or whatever like that. They didn't wake up knowing how to do that. They had to practice. They had to practice a million times. And then they finally could become a champion. The, the good news is, while that ice skater has to actually do the practice, you don't have to do your own repetition because you can automate that. Automated repetition makes for rich champions. You can do automated campaigns. Automation will allow you to do this thing. Want to do business? Want to do business? Want to do business? Without you actually doing the, the calling and the asking. The automation does that for you. 
quick little example. My wife says I'm hard to buy for for my birthday. So I said, I'm just going to put some notes on the kitchen dry erase board, what I want. And I wanted a BMO. It's this just big, flexible Frisbee we used to have when it got sort of dirty and chewed up. And so I said, I want a new BMO. So I wrote BMO. My wife misread my writing. And so for my birthday, she actually got me Bino. Bino is not BMO. If someone if someone says, hey, I want BMO, and you give them Bino, there will be a little uh, disappointment there. If someone comes to you and says, I need help with XYZ, and you don't give them that, there's frustration. So whatever you offer someone, you've got to be able to track that so you deliver exactly what people want, exactly what they expect from you. We're sort of talking about funnels and campaigns and sequences here. I want to I want to demystify this because some people get a little bit freaked out when I start talking about what a funnel is. A funnel is simply a set of directions to go from one place to another. It, it's the idea of like GPS. If I'm at home and I want to get to Target, I enter in my GPS. Hey, I want to get to Target, and and the GPS guides me there. It says, hey, take a left turn, go right, go a mile, take a whatever. It gets me there. And if I get lost, GPS says, hey, you took a wrong turn. Come back here, take another turn. We're going to get you there. GPS knows there's lots of different ways to get to Target, and they're going to get me there. That's the same with, with automated email marketing, with campaigns. If someone doesn't read the email that you sent them, you know that. So you say, hey, come on back here. Let's get you back on track. If someone doesn't click on the link, you know that. So you say, hey, you didn't get a chance to click on that. Let me send it to you again. It's you putting your arm around someone and saying, we got to get you to Target. We, whatever your solution is that you offer someone, you say, I want to get you there. You've told me you have a need. I want to help you get to that solution. And you don't let go of them until you get them there. Just like GPS will not let you get lost until you finally get to target. Let me give you some examples. So this is a, a company that does residential assisted living. Hmm, wonder why I might be looking at residential assisted living. Assisted living, in case you hear people calling in the background. Um, so somebody, hello, see people coming in and waving at me here. Um, so someone takes an ad out. This is a company that helps place people in a, like a residential assisted living place in a neighborhood. So they take out an ad on Facebook. And this is like a book that says keeping seniors safe during COVID. So this is targeted for people who have said, hey, need help finding assisted living for my mom or something. So they take out this, this ad. It's a book. It's a free book. So I see this like, oh, I, I would love that. I need that. So I click on that. It sends them to a landing page. All the pieces of the puzzle are starting to come together here, okay? You got this? It drives people to a landing page. From the landing page, I enter in my information. I say, yeah, I want a copy of that book. This kicks off the campaign. So have a, have a lead magnet, drive to a landing page. Here's the first email that goes out. Hey, thanks so much for requesting this book. Here's a link to your copy so you can get this. They send me other emails. They send me, hey, here's a link to a blog post on why smaller is better in assisted living. They send me other emails. And then, of course, they can send, because they have a calendar link, here's our calendar link. Book some time with us. Come in and take a tour. Let us show you the facility. Let's talk about something on the phone, whatever it might be. All that automation goes on. All of that, let's do business. Let's do business. Let's do business. And nobody has done anything. That is all completely automated until finally, hey, we found a, we have a room here for your mom. We've reserved a place. Click here to get your welcome letter and more information. Step one till the end all completely automated. A friend of ours, Michelle, uh, Lisa and I know Michelle McCullough. She's great. She is in, the, in our local NSA chapter. So Michelle speaks from stages and she talks to people about happiness. You can pay Michelle. A, she's a fee-based speaker. So you can pay Michelle and she will come speak on the stage and teach people about happiness. She will also, if you don't want to pay her, she will come speak for free and talk about social media and how you can grow your business through social media and different things like that. She will speak for free with the opportunity to capture the information of the people in the audience. Now, which do you think as a professional speaker she would rather do? To get a check and come speak or to speak and not get a check but just get the people in the audience? Hands down, every day, she will always choose to speak for free with the chance to capture the audience information because she knows there's way more money because she knows she has automation. She has a follow-up and a system. While she's on stage, she says, go to my landing page. From here, they can enter an information to get a free gift from her. She also has a form, a paper form they fill out where they can circle what areas that they, they're interested in, which she can enter in. 
Now the automation starts. Emails go out. Hey, thanks so much. As she builds a relationship with multiple emails until she says, by the way, I've got a book you can buy, 20 bucks. By the way, I've got a course on social media. It's like 80 bucks. By the way, I'm doing a live event. Come be part, back when we did live events. Come to my live event. I've got tickets that range from 300 to 1,000 bucks. She makes way more money off of the back end, off of her automation, off of her campaigns. She makes may, way more money than by someone writing her a check to come speak about happiness. If she can capture the contact, the contact information of people in the audience, this is her bread and butter. Uh, tomorrow, Chris Barney, I believe, is speaking. I was just talking to Chris. She uses Keep. She says, I, I love it. She and her husband both have accounts. They both have courses that they offer, and they can track exactly on who's the different stages people are in. When they send emails out to people, they love being able to know who's opening, who's not opening, who's clicking on links. They can track who are the hot leads and who are the not so hot leads. They can have those then automatically sent to people on their team to follow up the people who are the most engaged. This is all stuff that you can automate. So you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to tell you about Ryan. So one more quick little story. This is the tale of two funnels. I'm going to tell you different funnels here. This one by Ryan. So Ryan says, I want to coach you and tell you what kind of business you should start. I say, okay. So I'm going to give a little quiz. Here, I got a couple questions for you. So he asks me a couple questions in this quiz. I answer the questions. And he says, those questions, you start a PBEF. Now, you don't know what PBEF is, so give me your email address. I'll send you some information. So I send in my information, and he says, he gives me a video. It's a personalized video saying, hey, you're PBEF. PB means passion-based. You should have a passion-based business. You're a passionate person. And EF means it should be event-focused. So you should have live events or boot camps or something like that. So you are PBEF. Now I'm in his database. I'm segmented because he has a list of segmentation. The email automation continues. Over the last year and a half or so, he continues to send me emails. Hey, remember you're a PBEF. I got some extra results for you here. Hey, remember you're a PBEF. Here's some extra information you might find helpful. Ryan continues to reach out to me, knowing that I might need to start a PBEF business and he wants to be able to help me do that. I'm in his campaign. I'm in his funnel. I'm in his, he put his arm around me. I'm in his tribe. I feel like I belong somewhere. And so when I'm ready, I'm going to say, Ryan, let's do this thing. Now, let me tell you about Elizabeth Ryder. Elizabeth Ryder, she's like a nutritionist, a dietitian coach. She helps people overcome bad eating habits so they can look great and feel great and be in great shape. And she says, let me help you identify I have a quiz here that's going to help you identify what mistake is killing your healthy eating habits. I said, okay, good. I need to know that. So she asks me some questions. I say, okay, I'm a male. I like to eat cupcakes. And she says, okay, here's some other questions. I have the results. Give me your name and email. So I enter my name and email. And she says, okay, here's your result. You have goal confusion. You want to lose weight and you still want to eat cupcakes. And that's, a, that's goal confusion. So then guess what happens after that first email? Nothing happened after that first email. I got, I got one email from Elizabeth and that was it. Elizabeth has all sorts of great information. She could help me feel better, eat better, lose weight, be more active. She can help me do amazing things. She has all sorts of knowledge, but I never got any of it. I got one email and that was all. Because Elizabeth, although she's got great knowledge and information and has great ways of helping people, doesn't have any automation. She doesn't have anything to reach out. She doesn't have anything to take care of those people. Ryan puts his arm around me and says, I'm not going to let you go till I've helped you. Elizabeth just sort of gave me a card and said, here's what, you, here's what you need to know. And that was it. I don't want any one of you to be like that. You all need automation to take care of what you're doing. It's all, it's all the things that Lisa's teaching. All the things you're learning here today. All the things you're going to be learning from other people. All the things that you know you need to be doing in your business. Is that follow-up? Here's the last one. The last stumbling block is you're doing too many things with too many things. You have too many programs. I've mentioned a bunch of them already, like, like MailChimp and Zoho and Grasshopper. You've got all these different tools out there. Lesson number 10 is that all in one place beats all over the place. And the problem is that many of us are all over the place. When you've got a bunch of tools, you have what I call loginitis. You log into this program and log into this program. You're spending your day logging into all this kind of stuff. You know, you feel that pain. Here's the example. This is a, an ad from Radio Shack in 1990, I think. 
Um, there's a bunch of stuff on there. There's cool stuff. There's a computer and a phone and a video camera and a calculator and a music player and a radio and all sorts of stuff. And do you know that every single thing on that ad, every single thing is on your phone. It's all been replaced by your phone. And there's a reason why everybody's walking around with their phone in their pocket. And while Radio Shack's trying to figure out how to reinvent themselves is because all in one place beats all over the place. If someone asked you to build a birdhouse and then gave you a bunch of weird tools, you couldn't do it. That's not a system. It's not a way to do that. So instead, picture you having the best tools you could imagine, like a Swiss army knife with like 32 blades. Oh, and some of those tools are scheduling and quotes and invoices and a CRM and a mobile app and all that kind of stuff. And that pocket knife is in the hands of a robot because it's automated, because it has automated landing pages and automated campaigns and it's sitting on a pile of cash because you're making money from it. When you get the right tools together in one place and you automate those tools, you will be successful. Damon John from Shark Tank, first question he asks people when he partners, he says, do you have keep? Or are you getting it? Because that's how I know you're serious about this. Dave Ramsey, Tony Robbins, Jack Canfield, all know this is the secret. They all use Keep. Otherwise, you'd have to use, like I said, Grasshopper for your phone, Schedule Ones for your calendars, Constant Contact to send your email, Zoho for your CRM, ClickFunnels for your uh, automation funnels campaign, Lead Pages for your landing pages. And none of those talk to each other. With Keep, not only do they talk to each other, they are each other. Every single thing I talked to you about, every one of those top 10 ways to win more business is all included inside the tools in Keep. And it is all automated to help you save time. Now, there are three different levels and I wanna, I wanna help you get set up with the right level because I wanna help you all be more successful, make more money and spend less time. Infusionsoft, as I mentioned, Infusionsoft still is a program. It still is a tool. I don't think it's the right tool for any of you. So I'm not gonna have, I, I don't really wanna even talk about that. Keep Pro is the better tool. It's everything that I talked about today. It's all the organizational tools. It's all of the automation tools. And it is it's the best thing. Keep Grow doesn't have the automation. So if you're looking at saving time with the automated campaigns and the landing pages, Keep Grow doesn't do that for you. So I think Keep Pro is the best fit. And because of that, I've sort of put together a nice little bundled package of things just for Keep Pro. The normal price of Keep Pro is $149 a month and the normal price of Keep Grow is $79 a month. But now here comes the good news because you're here because Lisa and I are good friends and go back many years. I said, Lisa, I'm going to get you literally the absolute best anybody can possibly get for Keep. And, and I'm just telling you, I, I know a lot of people who sign up with Keep in a lot of different ways. What I'm about to tell to you, hands down, I swear it, is the best offer you will ever get and ever even imagine. Everything I'm going to show you now is all good news. First news, first bit of good news, you don't have to pay retail. We're going to discount your price to $99 a month. You won't ever have to worry about paying that. For less than $100 a month, you get all those tools I talked about. If you bought those tools individually, it would cost you way more than $99. I guarantee you that. So you're going to get guaranteed $99 a month. If we were at a real event, this, this is the, the order form we use. Uh, the account comes with one user and 500 contacts. So a database that can hold 500 and the one user. The onboarding coaching is three calls, three sessions for 500 bucks. But remember, I told you, everything's good news. Everything I'm going to show you now, hooping and hollering time. You're going to be wishing you had your New Year's noisemakers back so you can, you can celebrate. Okay, Keep Pros, $99 a month. You will never have to pay more than that. If anybody ever calls you, say, I'm grandfathered in. I'm part of Lisa's tribe. Don't even talk to me. Just hang the phone up on them. You will never have to, they won't call you, by the way. You will never have to pay more than $99 than it's ever been before. And you don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to be trapped in a contract. There's no contract. We, we ask you to commit. We're, we're committing to you. We're investing a lot of time and money in you. So we ask for a commitment, but you don't have to sign anything. Here's all you have to do. Keepnow.com forward slash B-O-A. Keepnow.com forward slash B-O-A. Take a screenshot of this, take a picture, write it down, open up a tab, do whatever you need to do. Keep now, and keep is spelled differently, K-E-A-P, and make sure you write now. If you just type keep.com, keep, keep 
you're going to go to the regular key and they won't have a clue what you're talking about and they're not going to be able to get you the special deal. They don't know any about anything about what we're doing. So keepnow.com forward slash BOA. So there, keepnow.com forward slash BOA. Uh, by the way, if you want to, if you have questions for me, and I'm going to try to hop in chat here in just a second and see if there's something I need to cover. There's my personal phone number. There is my email address. You are welcome at any time to reach out to me. I'll answer any questions you have. But literally the most important thing on that screen is the top line, keepnow.com forward slash BOA. That's what's going to be what you need to figure out Everything you know. Oh no! Oh no! Questions. Good. You knew I wasn't going to be on there, so you didn't have to answer any questions. Lisa, tell um, me. I forgot. I, I, B -B -O -A. <laughs> business. Business. I forgot what BOA stands for. Business. Business owners advocate. Uh, owners. Owners. That was the like, I like officials or offices. Okay. <laughs> business. Oh. So. So that is the yeah. That's the link you need so that you get Lisa's special deal. Keepnow.com forward slash. Incredible. BOA. Any questions you have for me, Lisa? Well, first of all, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to sign up. I, I know, I know, seriously. I mean, I mean, seriously, it is that good for less than 50 bucks. You're getting oh the best. Okay. In a month from now, you'll have stuff built, you'll have stuff running, you'll have stuff, and you're like, why, what took me so long? So yeah, sorry, yeah. jump in. Well, there. no, I was going to say, I was, I, I just kept praying. It's like, please be under $200. Just please be <laughs> under $200. Because <laughs> I know that like Infusionsoft back a while, back a long time ago was like 297 or something like that. And I'm like, yeah. oh. It, I, literally, when, when I first started, Infusionsoft was two ninety nine a month, and to sign up was fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, um, and so you go from that three hundred dollars a month and fifteen hundred dollars to start out to forty nine dollars and absolutely no money to sign up and nothing to sign a long term contract and the best, better coaching than you, than we ever gave before and better tools for literally a fraction of what it used to be. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes, like I always say, it's, it's nice to know people, you know, people in power. <laughs> so I love that. So I, so my questions was, I guess, it, so I've got like MailChimp in that. So I can get rid of MailChimp. Yeah, this right? would completely cover anything a MailChimp would do. Exactly. Okay. So I can get rid of MailChimp. Right now I've got HubSpot. So and what, I, do you, what do you use HubSpot for? Well, I'm supposed to be using it for my CRM. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> But um, yes, yeah, so um, but my biggest question. So that'll was, all be together, right? Why, why would someone together. want to have their CRM? Yeah, why yeah. would someone want to, have, want to have their CRM separate from their emails? It's all one tool. Who came up with the concept that let's bleed into a whole bunch of different things that don't fit together? Let's. These are all tools that can work and should work together. Absolutely. So, and then the other question was like because I was talking about doing this conference. And I did not understand all of the back end stuff. And when they said, okay, now we got to get your landing page ready. So uh, where are you hosting your website? And where is that, you know, and every time, and then I was told, and I found that this was wrong, was that every time I decided to do a conference, I'd need a new website or basically a new URL, which would create a new website. And it's like, I don't need a hundred websites. So you, can you create and host the landing pages inside a key? Or do you need you a website? All, you, you, you can do all that. You can build 100 landing pages. You can have a different landing page for every event you do. We host those all inside of Keep, so you're not having to build new landing pages. Ever. You can have a regular website, your regular traditional website, and then say, hey, I've got an event. Click here. They click there, and it takes them to the landing page specific to that event that's coming up. And then when that one's done, you can you can basically clone that that landing page and just create a new one with the new dates and the new times and the new content and just continue to rotate through various landing pages and just create new landing pages instead of creating new websites. Wow. Yeah, I mean those it's like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have I wish I would have met you. <laughs> I wish I had, <laughs> had this like a, two months ago. Two months yeah, ago. Yeah, why didn't we have this conversation a while ago? It would have made your oh, life so much easier. Oh, uh, can I tell you all of the headaches? Um, in fact, that biggest part too was just that um, with doing these website and this landing page and that, um, there was so many problems that I know that there's probably a lot of other people that would have signed up, but they were transferring it to another website and it was coming back with privacy error. And so, you know, when you talk about, you know, somebody clicking on something and then they get hit with this might be a scam or this might be. Right. Know. 
Yeah. And when I seen that, when somebody says, hey, I got this error message, I'm like, oh, no. Oh. If ever a question and you wanted to get signed up, you can reach out to me. There's my phone number and my email address. You can text me, call me. I mean, it's, that's my personal number, so you can text or call on that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, 